speaker view. Yeah, good. So, hi, okay, hello. We got um, hello. Hello. <laughs> so, my name is Christian McNeil. Um, I'm a three principles practitioner based in Glasgow, and today I'm interviewing um, my good friend and a, a much more experienced facilitator and coach and um, everything else, Mary Mary White, who's um, whose take on the three principles has really inspired me and I've um, we've connected online a, a few times over the past few years and I've just been really touched by your story um, Mary what, what the, the transformation that's taken place in your own life um, and, and also how you you talk about the principles and how you've helped other people um, so it would be lovely, you know, perhaps if you could just do your, your, your you know, your little, uh, you know, a little bit of a bio and, and you know, where you came from and, and, you know, how these touched you and, and where you are today, if that's all right initially. Well, sure. Thanks, Christian. Um, you know, I, I came upon this understanding about 22, 23 years ago, something like that. Uh, very, very fortunately. Um, and uh, in my own counseling, because I was I was in need of, of counseling back then. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to say the same story over and over and over again, but, uh, you know, the, the real turning point for me was happened, uh, one turning point anyway, where it happened very quickly for me um, when I was just introduced to this basically through some writing about a, a book that actually was The Serenity Principle by Joe Bailey. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and he was writing about thought and reality. And, and I, you know, I've gone back to this book a hundred times to look for this, the one sentence that really stood out for me that I read over and over and over again. And I haven't been able to find it. <laughs> Reminds me of um, one of Sid Banks talks where he said, you know, he, he would go to the Krishnamurti book and, and, uh, and went back and couldn't find that one thing that really jumped out at him because <laughs> Early in the book, I mean, it was something he read, but it was something that struck him from it within, mm. and that's kind of the same thing that happened for me. So, I popped when I when I saw deeper, I saw the connection between my thinking and my reality, um, or be be between the power of thought and reality. And what what occurred to me in my own experience at that moment was that all the unhappiness and negativity and anxiety and insecurity and suffering that I've been living in was thought. And I saw that at a level that I hadn't seen that before because people had said, oh, you think too much. Oh, you don't, you shouldn't worry so much. And oh, you have everything going for you. What's the matter? And I'd be like, yeah, I know, but I didn't really know. Hmm. So there was something about what I saw, you know, with luckily I was so lucky that I saw that at that deeper level of truth that we live in a thought created reality. We can't step outside of that. And I got a real big glimpse of that at that moment. And then, then I got curious and I, and I decided to go for more. So I was lucky to be introduced to Mavis who mentored me uh, after that. And another great lady. <laughs> oh, she's wonderful. Mm. And we're still, you know, buds and colleagues and she's still my mentor when I need one. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was thinking this morning, um, well, it's interesting because I'm going to veer off a little bit here, but mm -hmm. last night I watched um, um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, I just thought it was on, and I just wanted, I just felt, you know, I was tired after a long day, and I just thought, I'm going to watch this. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading those books as a child. My brother gave them to me, and I was, I devoured them as a kid. Mm -hmm. And you know, although I know C.S. Lewis was um, writing kind of from a Christian kind of point of view, although I didn't really know that when I was a child, mm -hmm. um, they, they talked about the deep magic. And I love that term. I'd forgotten about that term. Mm. And I thought this morning, as I was just kind of waking up and reflecting on that, I thought, you know, I love that term, the deep magic, because what these principles really what 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 it felt like to me when I was starting to get a glimpse of this truth was a deep magic. And 22 years later, I feel that a lot of the time, like this feeling of being inspired for no particular reason, this beautiful feeling of just being in the moment. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have anything to do with anything that's getting on going on in my life. And more and more, 
when I wake up in the morning, I feel inspired or I feel like it's Christmas morning or I feel that deep magic. And I'm so grateful for that, you know, and it has nothing to do with the circumstances in my life. Um, And there's like, if I really take a look at the circumstances in my life, I can always find ways that I want to tweak things like, oh, I'd like a little bit more business or I'd like, you know, this or that. But that it has nothing to do with that. So that first insight felt very freeing to me. And that freedom is seeing that deeper magic, that deeper essence of who we really are and, and, and how our experience really happens. When we see that simultaneously, when I, stuck, when I saw how the experience, the, <laughs> I got a glimpse of the inside out nature of our experience I got in touch with that deeper place. And I didn't have the words for it at the time, but I shifted at that moment. I really shifted. Things, old habits that were in my head weren't as appealing to me, like complaining or getting down on myself or whatever it was. And people even noticed right after that. So I, I don't know. I'm just so grateful. And I, and, you know, I was so grateful that I had the mentoring to go deeper and deeper and deeper in it to the point of you reach a point of no return where you just know yeah. that this is how the mind works and this is who you are. And even though you might get caught up from time to time in your own thinking, in your own old habits that, that come to the surface, the truth is right there. And so I feel like I have this safety net and, um, it's guided me for the last 20 years, 20 some years. Well, I love that, Mary. I love that term, the, the deeper magic, the deep magic. And I, I also, I mean, I only read the first one, the line that went to the when I love, but I did love it. And um, I don't remember coming across that term, but, but, um, but it's delightful. And, it, um, and, and it is, a wonderful experience to, 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 to sort of have that come into into your life into my life um, and I when you were speaking about the the gratitude you, you touched on gratitude several times before I came to the principles that you know you know this idea of nurturing gratitude was something that I'd been taught and it sounded like a great idea you know sort of you know notice that your glass is half full not empty um, or, or you know and, and and make gratitude lists but it's it never really, it never really did much for me. It never really helped me to see that, you know, um, you know, okay, so I've got this problem, but other people have worse problems or I don't have that, or, you know, thank God that I have, do have A, B and C. It was, it was never really helpful to me because what I've come to understand now is it's almost impossible to sort of force yourself to, to, to think and feel differently for any length of time in any sort of sustained way. But what you're describing, or at least what I'm taking from what you're describing, is that just that bubbling up of, um, of, of happiness and contentment and um, gratitude. I, that I also feel frequently, I just think, God, I love my life. You know, just, and I'm often doing something really, really ordinary, like walking to the shops at the moment. You know, it's, it's, it's not that, and, um, it, it, that it's the ultimate peak experience in terms of externals, if you know what I mean. But um, yeah, it, it, it's it's really um, an amazing experience to have that, and and that sense of deep magic is an apt description. Mm-hmm. But you used a you used another expression there towards the end that the other um, colleagues in our field talk about, and, and talking about the safety net, and and I just wonder if you could be a little more explicit of of how how you see that, what you mean by that. Mm. Well, I think when I first, that term first came to me was, again, many years ago now, when I was having a discussion, um, probably with Mavis, about mind. And... um, So just to cut in for a moment, mind is what, when we were talking about mind, we're talking about the... The, the, the universal energy, um, the, 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 um, some people might call it God, but this is this, this, um, the force. <laughs> yeah. But one of the three principles, that, um, that, that idea that there's this animating force that is, that's alive in the universe. Right. And, and I want to also say that when I talk about a principle separately, it's really, we know that they're, they're all three inseparable. Mm. 
but for explanatory purposes, we, it's easier to talk about, sometimes talk about them separately. But we were talking about essentially what mind is pointing to or what the three principles is pointing to is that, that, that divine essence of life, um, the energy of all things, whatever term works for people. I, I like to, the, to consider the spiritual intelligence within everything. Hmm that we can't see that's formless, but that shows up as everything. It's, hmm. it, is, it, is the form, it is the form that we see in life. It's all of life and us too. Mm-hmm. So I started to get a, well, it was feeling like coming home to the realization that I already had, but didn't know I had, that I am that and you are that and everybody is. Hmm. Therefore, I don't, I've got everything I need. I don't have to, um, my spiritual life, my, the essence of who I am. And in that sense, safety net, because it's a guiding intelligence. It's, it's, it's an inner knower that shows up when we need it. It's resilience when it shows up when we need it. It's common sense that shows up when we need it. It's a creative solution or an insight that just shows up, bubbles up when we need it. Hmm. So it's that, that, invisible but ever present sense that we are connected to that which we come from and therefore we have access to it so i always felt like i was plugged into something that was a part of me that was that i had access to so i was never separate i was never separate from the divine intelligence behind life and that's a very comforting feeling <laughs> to see that because we don't have to look outside of ourselves for the answer or for a feeling or for comfort or for solutions. It's already there. So the safety net feeling for me was, oh, I've already got everything I need. I'm a complete set. I'm already whole. And so is everybody. We all are. We're all in this. And it's not external to us. It's not... um, yeah, it's just, it's not an outside in deal. It's, it's inside. It's another term that's, that's being used. But I guess for me, it's, it's hard to put into words. It's more of a feeling. Yeah. A feeling that I'm already, I'm safe and I'm whole. And the only thing that can take me out of that is a thought that I'm entertaining in the moment. Mm-hmm. So even if I'm in an unsafe environment, for, for instance, which I've been in in my life, my lack of safety can only really come from, even though physically I might be in danger, my spirit can be intact. Yeah. I can be fearless in the face of that. I can be whole in the face of that. It doesn't have to... You know, and that helped me in my life without even having learned the principles, actually. I tapped into that. Mm-hmm. Back on it now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love the way you put that. And, and I suppose many people might have had that experience of in a moment of emergency, say something like a car crash or, or mm-hmm. something like that, that, that wisdom and clarity and um, rising to the occasion just come to the fore. Um, and, and, and what the value in, in knowing um, about the principles, the inside out understanding is um, kind of understanding why that's happening and becoming clear and becoming more and more something that one can rely on. Um, that's always, that's always there and knowing that no circumstance has the power of itself to remove psychological or spiritual safety, that those are always mm-hmm. available. Yeah. That's a nice way to put it, Christian. Yeah. And, and the, the understanding of this, these principles to the degree to which you, would, you have seen it for yourself will provide you, like you said, you, you know, it's like you can count on it to be true. So you can, because it's a constant, yeah. the way our mind works and who we really are are constants. So we can count on that. That's the same net too. We can we can rely on that, as you said. When you don't know it, you get lost and you get frightened and you get off or you get insecure, 
And that happens <laughs> to me too sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not for long. Not for long because yeah. I know. So I can go back to that knowing. And that's the safety net. Hmm. So oh, well. knock on wood, not that I'm, I'm inviting any <laughs> calamities in my life, but I know that no matter what happens, I can land on my feet. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, know that is lovely. Um, and while you were speaking, something came to mind because I think I was, although I always knew I had that capacity to be good in a, in a crisis. Um, and a lot of the rest of my life, I was what I would now call extremely outside in. Um, so I was looking for things outside myself to sort of cling on to for security. And of course that didn't work. Um, but, you know, things like, you know, I, alcohol, cigarettes, relationships, <laughs> food, yeah. Um, yeah. a career, you know, all, I mean, it was endless, absolutely endless. But I, I, I've heard you speak before about... Um, beginning to have a very different um, experience of relationships, to see relationships, romantic relationships differently after you came to understand the principles. And it caught my attention because a, it's not, you know, not everybody, it's, it's not that common to hear people talk about that, but, and, and, but B, because it had been one of my issues as well, very much, you know, I had a, a number of very difficult, challenging relationships that seemed to bring a lot of unhappiness into my life. But I'd love to hear you, um, you know, talk about that again, because I find it absolutely inspiring. So uh, I think my, maybe what you're referring to is, is kind of my learning curve with. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, to be honest, it was well into my understanding of this that I still had a learning curve with relationships. We can only see as far as we can see mm -hmm. in the moment, right? Um, but I think historically, if I could just summarize it, looking back on it, I, I chose relationships out of insecurity mm -hmm. and or for excitement. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that kind of like feeling of excitement, which is an outside in kind of idea that, you know, um, which is why I sought after um, powerful drugs, too. It was for the excitement. Mm -hmm. um, and. I was always kind of an experimental mindset anyway, so and a little bit of a risk taker um, in that sense. So over the years, you know, I, but I believe that, you know, I look back on all my relationships and I think I learned something from each one of them. Mm -hmm. And there were certain parts of the relationship that, that were like, there might be two or three qualities is like, oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for in somebody that, that fits with me, that, um, that works. But it really wasn't until I got super clear on, I think, where I was coming from in deciding, making a decision about a relationship. I needed to see that for myself. And again, with the guidance of my mentor, <laughs> um, because I had I'd gotten out of, when I learned, the, when I really woke up to this understanding and decided that I wanted to go into the field of mental health, and share this with people. I was in a long-term relationship and we had a great rapport in a lot of ways. We were good friends, but it started to look like there wasn't, it just really wasn't we're going to work for me. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize that I'd already been checked out and I hadn't even really seen that in myself. That's how we can get up in our heads so much. We don't even listen to that mm -hmm. deeper part of ourselves that knows what's right. And I had been overriding that for some time. And then I finally woke up to the fact that I couldn't, I couldn't go any further. Mm -hmm. So that relationship ended. And then it was sort of like, because that had been long term, then it was kind of like, Yahoo, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going for all these excitement things <laughs> for a bit. And then I realized that's not working. You know, come on now, come on now. I kind of, you know, got a little bit of excitement going and I was like, that's really not it. And I guess just to make a long story short, because I don't want to go into the nitty gritty details of all that. Mm -hmm. I, I just finally realized, you know, and it'd been, it'd been coming up to me. I mean, my, my wisdom was speaking to me the whole time and I would listen to it for a while and then I would override it. So I had this back and forth thing going for a while 
And I finally, finally, finally sat myself down and said, look, you got to listen. you got to listen to what's really true here. And so I made the decision to just be myself and drop every, you know, get out of everything that I was, you know, get out of this one on and off thing and, and just be myself. Mm -hmm. Me and my dog, Zach, pack a two. Mm -hmm. And um, I did. And that was because that was an alignment with, I would say, wisdom, um, with my inner knower, what I needed to do and, and came out of an insight. I finally lost the pining. The pining finally went away. This pining like this still the little hold out in the back of my mind of there's, there's something out there that, that, that's, that I need, that I need to mm -hmm. feel what X, Y, or Z. And it wasn't true. It was a thought. It was just a, a, that an insecure, an old, an old holdout of my old insecure thinking, mm -hmm. you could say. And I finally just said, no more. I'm not listening to that anymore. So I did. And, and for quite a while, I just got really content to just be. And then it dawned on me again, this just kind of came to me that, you know, maybe it's time. And so I opened up the possibility and, and went online, you know, because that's what people do <laughs> in modern days. And, uh, and I found my mate. <laughs> it was like, and what's really interesting to me, talk about that deep magic again, mm -hmm. because having conversations with Mag with Mavis always felt magical to me. I remember her saying one time, you know, the, whoever you're looking for has got his timing too. Mm -hmm. and that stuck with me. And you know, what's so fascinating is that that's really what happened. That the person that I now am with had his own route <laughs> yeah. to, to being free of his past relationships and to be in a clearing. And then when we came together, it was like, Oh my God, how did that happen? How did we find each other in, you know, in our fifties? <laughs> so anybody out there listening, that's, that's a little bit older like me, don't give up. It's, there's always hope. I and, love that. <laughs> and um, I'm really, um, it's a deep, wonderful connection that I have with this man. He's a gem of a human being, just a gem. Now it's not that we don't have our disagreements. Because we're both kind of, stubborn in our ways but uh and we've both been independent for so long but boy oh boy we work them out and and that that depth of connection is there and i'm so grateful so i'm so grateful that i finally listened and when i was list when i was going through the process of you know i went on match.com mm -hmm. and i remember telling myself okay just listen to your wisdom here listen to that inner knower that feeling listen for the feeling i guess is it i know it's the most brilliant thing I heard Sydney Banks say is, listen to the feeling, listen to the feeling. And I did. And, and there was times when I kind of overrode it and went on a couple of dates and they were like, eh, oh my gosh, why did I do that? <laughs> and then something drew me to, the, to Steve, his name is Steve's profile, and I looked at it and I went, oh, pay attention, pay attention to this one. And I just felt drawn to that and, you know, it worked. So delightful that's it's, it's delightful. I hope that wasn't too many details <laughs> no no really delightful <laughs> and I, I loved um you know what you said about the pining dissolving you know that that sense of the pining and and, and for me that you know that was one of the kind of outside in things that was the most persistent um yeah you know that that um other other things had kind of floated off and it, you know i was much more content within my skin but that 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 took longer and then and then it it, it changed and the freedom when you're not pining you know sort of seeking searching hunting for you know that is is immense um and um such a relief to, to, to be free of it, you know, that, you know, I have such gratitude for that. And I've, I'm just back from the, the Lake District and uh, um, I, 
I've only been there a few times in my life and one was with someone who you know was very important to me at the time and um and it was a very painful complicated relationship and he he's dead now um but yeah um but it's i mean it's a long it's all all of it's a long time ago but you know um both the relationship and his death but i i i was just struck by um you know, he was one of several sort of tricky and difficult and painful relationships um, that I was involved in. And um, but I was just struck. I remembered something that I think it's Marianne Williamson came out with it that only the love is real. And and even in these these situations, you know, today I can, I, I do I, I you know I do feel love for those people I don't want to be with them I don't want to go back there I don't want to repeat any of that that you know that kind of way of being but um you know that that love is real it's still it's still true I still um have that in me but it's not in a way that's a barrier to anything else and and it's a lovely place to be you know it's a lovely place of um conciliation or reconciliation or something like that Mm -hmm. but I'm 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 conscious that um, our our time is is moving on, and um, it, it, I've I've loved what you've shared, Mary, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, there, just before we finish, so that you, one, I don't know if you have anything further that you would like to add, and and two, it'd be nice to know. Um, you know how people can can um, connect with you and and who do you work with? I mean, as a as a um, who 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 would be the right person to connect f- with you if they're if they've been drawn to what you've um, been speaking about today? Oh well, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, I um, I do both counseling in in Minneapolis here and coaching too. So I do online coaching and distance coaching for people. You know, I've tried to come up with a niche, <laughs> but <laughs> work with so many different people. Um, but you know, I would, I would really, I think I would love to work with, with women on relationships or men for that matter. Um, and uh, you know, I, I do a lot of work uh, with just mental health, a lot of work with helping people get over depression, get over anxiety, get over addictions. Mm-hmm. come to peace with themselves find <clears throat> find a way to you know understand what insecurity really is and not have to live out of it anymore mm-hmm. um, which was been which was my you know my huge um i guess accomplishment <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, not that it doesn't happen from time to time but that was a big one for me and um you know um you know, I do do a lot of work with, I do a fair amount of work with couples, although uh, not as much as individuals. Mm-hmm. And, um, so people can get a hold of me through email, mwhite6013 at gmail. I have a website that's um, still a work in progress. Uh, that's, mm-hmm. an, that's not been my forte, but uh, marywhiteassociates.com. And yeah. And, and I'll put those links um, on the on the YouTube page so that people can have it if they didn't if they didn't catch it as it went by. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Um, um, thank you so much for the conversation. I've really enjoyed it, I, as I always enjoy chatting um, to you, Mary. And I hope anybody watching our video enjoys it just as much. So thank you. Well, thank you, and likewise. Okay. Bye-bye.